you know, Temporary. after a bit of time, you know, everyone back, went back to their lives. And I've stuck on, so um, I, you just help in the day-to-day -day running and we have other volunteers still who help us. Although animals, dogs are well known to embody higher values of loyalty, courage and being totally in the moment of experience. Values spiritual seekers strive to inculcate. They've made for a dog called Bali and then we, they've constructed a little home for the dog to sit on. So our dogs can sit in there. And in the winter we put blankets in there so it's, um, you know. Although man is considered superior to animals, humans are also well known to cause pain and suffering to animals. It is noble souls like Mudita that shine as examples of selfless service and provide a glimmer of hope to our furry friends. Then there's Oscar. Dear Oski, you were the only one on earth who loved us more than you loved yourself. Namita this Nishan love and respect for all life is born out of the Hindu principle of oneness, where the absolute, the one, is experienced in the many. Just as we revere and respect our departed family and friends, so too many dog lovers remember and pay tribute to their pets by sharing their love with the dogs at the shelter. We also have this thing recently which people have started doing, which is, uh, you know, when their parents have passed and if their parents were big lovers of animals, they come and on their death anniversary come and feed all the dogs. Or if, they, if it's their child's birthday, or uh, just a special event, you know, where a lot of young uh, kids also really like coming here. So we have tie-ups with schools where they come and just spend an hour a month, a month in six months, once in six months. You know, it's not a, a fixed thing. They can come whenever they feel like it. You know, in India we have, um, you know, not enough people doing things for animals, and you see so many animals suffering. And I think that uh, you keep waiting for someone else to take charge, like you want your government, you want, you know, your neighbour, you want someone else to do it. But for me it was that taking charge and, you know, being the example and setting the example and saying, I can do this in my community. So for example, I sterilise all the dogs in my area and I look after all the dogs in my area and I'm sure someone else could do it where they are. We have a lot to learn from animals, especially like, you know, if you look at how kind a cow's eyes are or how uh, unconditional, uh, unconditionally loving dogs and loyal. And if you even see them in, in a normal sense uh, with dogs, you know, they, they'll be chewing on a bone or playing with a ball or drinking water. They're very in the moment. I've seen people who are scared of dogs or um, they are just, or they don't like them, and I feel that they are cutting themselves off from something that's quite natural. And uh, if they open themselves up to that, they notice other things opening up in their lives as well. So. Uh Welcome back to Sadhna, The Inward Path. This year, the Gandhi Development Trust marked the 10th anniversary of its annual Salt Walk. Coming up next, we meet the walkers who took to the streets in solidarity with Gandhiji's principles of Satya and Ahimsa. Satya means truth and Agraha means persuasion. Satyagraha also means soul force. Each one of us has a spirit within us and we harness the power of the spirit within us. It is a force that can work. You just have to have patience, you have to have the right will and the right understanding. And this is what we are trying to promote through this march. Initially, Gandhiji did the salt march in defiance. 
uh, in India. And I think uh, what we are, um, are addressing is the non-violence aspect that each one of us uh, can become part of. Even if we had a violent past, and we've seen our own country come together, uh, you know, from apartheid to democracy and how we work together. It celebrates the uh, life and uh, achievements of uh, Gandhi and uh, Nkosi Lutuli. What Gandhiji showed us is that there's another way of changing the world, uh, and that is through Satyagraha. And if we want to change the world, we have to be humble. Looking back 10 years, the Gandhi Salt March is growing from strength to strength. It's very important that our city is also partner to it. So it gives us a big clout to say, you know, it's just not the Gandhi Development Trust or the partners that are doing it, but it is the whole city coming together to, to, to be part of this annual event. There's a wonderful mix of people who have taken part. If you look at the uh, different uh, religions, different uh, racial groups, and the youth taking part, this is a wonderful celebration. So happy to see so many young people. That was actually our mission as the DRC, to get as many young people as we possibly could to come out today and join in. It was really phenomenal to see. There is actually a place for young people and non-violence in the future. The commemoration is just basically to honor him and his legacy and uh, his philosophy in life. It's a wonderful day out, uh, not forgetting the historical uh, significance of this, you know, to celebrate Gandhi's uh, achievement. It's been really well organized, everyone seems happy, there's a lovely atmosphere, everyone's getting on, um, lots of good refreshments, I'm really enjoying it and I'm very happy to be here. It uh, was okay and it was fun, but my legs are fading a bit. We had the young and the old and the fit and the not so fit. This is when all the activists, all the people who believe in the Gandhian philosophy and support that philosophy come together and commit themselves again anew to, to live that philosophy in, in the society. He's really very alive. His ideas are more alive now than when he was living. The actual salt march in India, that small act turned out masses were joining because one man decided to make a difference. His motto and his mission, which is what we're celebrating today, was to do it in a non-violent way. Violence doesn't achieve its aims, but I think non-violence is able to achieve good results. It's important for us to be part of any process that calls for peace, non-violence, good world, welcoming the other, forming caring communities and learning to live together. To live in a peaceful society where violence is not an issue, you've already won half of the battle. So it is in fact um, a really a vital step and crucial step for the future and for any society and show their support for wanting to see South Africa um, less violent and more peaceful. It was Gandhiji who once said, be the change that you want to see in the world. And like Mudita in New Delhi, it is up to you and I to help create a more loving and peaceful society. We play out today's episode with an all-time favorite, Prabhuji Sadahi Kirpa, a devotee's earnest prayer seeking divine peace and blessings to stay on this path of truth and righteousness. Like Gandhi the icon, or us ordinary souls, like you, I, or Mudita. The soul-stirring bhajan is performed by the talented Dharam Maharaj. Do enjoy and keep up your sadhana. Hari Om.
प्रभु जी सदा ही कृपा हम पे बनाए रखना प्रभु जी सदा ही कृपा हम पे बनाए रखना प्रभु जी सदा ही कृपा हम पे बनाए रखना प्रभु जी सदा ही कृपा हम पे बनाए रखना जो रास्ता सही हो जो रास्ता सही हो उस पे चलाए रखना कृपा बनाए रखना कृपा बनाए रखना प्रभु जी सदा ही कृपा हम पे बनाए रखना दो जहा के मालिक तेरे दर के हम सवाली सब कुछ गया है लेकिन मर्यादा है संभाली जो सिखाया ना भुलाना हर हाल मुस्कुराना आंसू छुपाए रखना कृपा बनाए रखना कृपा बनाए रखना प्रभु जी सदा ही कृपा हम पे बनाए रखना तो जहा के मालिक अब क्या गिला करूं मैं सब एक बार मरते क्यों रोज ही मरू मैं सह पाऊंगी मैं कैसे गम के चिता पैसे खुद को जलाए रखना कृपा बनाए रखना कृपा बनाए रखना प्रभु जी सदा ही कृपा हम पे बनाए रखना छुपाए रखना कृपा बनाए रखना कृपा बनाए रखना प्रभु जी सदा ही कृपा हम पे बनाए रखना तो जहा के मालिक अब क्या गिला करू मैं सब एक बार मरते क्यों रोज ही मरू मैं सह पाऊंगी मैं कैसे गम के चिता पैसे खुद को जलाए रखना कृपा बनाए रखना कृपा बनाए रखना प्रभु जी सदा ही कृपा हम पे बनाए रखना
Namaskaram, Om Sai Ram, and welcome to this morning's episode of Sadhana, The Inward Path. Yes, with the wintry chills upon us, don't we yearn for the warmth of brighter days? In store today, we meet the brightness with one of South Africa's shining stars, Tyron Pele, and learn more about his remarkable Seva initiative. Another story to keep you bright and breezy is at Poshepston, where we witness the unveiling of Hanuman Baba's new home. But first, we jet off to the baking Badrachalam heat of India to acquaint ourselves with the ancient tales of Hanumanji's lord, Sri Ram, and this holy land. He took from the rich and wicked and gave to the poor and noble. Yes, Hinduism's own Robin Hood, Sri Ram Das of Badrachalam, whose beautiful Telugu compositions are still sung to this day with love and reverence. He lived more than 400 years ago but his tale transports us back to a time when the lotus feet of Lord Ram walked the holy land of Bharat. Badrachalam, famous for Sita Rama temple. Ramdasa built the temple in 16th century. The will, the, this area covered by, full of trees and peaceful area, full of birds and uh, look like forest. If you reach the area, you can get some peace of mind. Nelakondapalli is a village. Now it's in Hyderabad. Hyderabad, in previous Nelakondapalli is a village. Badrachala Ramadasa was born in that village. Then he shifted to Badrachala. Actually, his name is Gopanna. Gopanna is his first name. Because of uh, devotee of Lord Rama, he becomes Ramadasa. Rama came to Badrachala. When he came from Ayodhya to Lanka, he crossed that area. On the way, he, he set the Parnasala there. He set Parnasala. Parnasala means Kutil, that is house. Yeah, he stayed there and he stayed and uh, uh, that's why uh, that, uh, that area is very famous. Ramdasa uh, his uncle worked in uh, government, that Tanisha. He, he got the job for him in that government. He became Tasildar. From childhood, uh, Ramdasa, uh, ardent uh, follower of Rad Rama. He listened to Valmiki, he studied Valmiki Ramayana and he know the value of the name of Rama. The very Rama Nama is uh, powerful than Rama. So he always chanting Rama Rama like Anuman. Uh, he built a, a temple. You know it is very famous. That is nearly 450 years back. Badrachala Ramadasa, he collected tax from people. Uh, in that Mughal king, during Mughal king period, but he spent that money for poor feeding. The king didn't do anything for people, so he collected the money and he distributed the money in the form of food to people and feed the poor people. At the same time, he wants to build temple for Rama. He slowly built a temple. At the finishing stage, uh, the Tanisha came to know. He, he never returned the money, the um, tax, where he collected from people. Then finally he uh, caught him and put a present in Golconda. For more than 12 years, uh, he was in that prison. He becomes a devotee of Lord Rama. He composed more than 300 songs, 300 kirtanams in praise of Lord Rama. 
he attained too much pain but in that time he always prayed rama take care of my people take take care of my citizen then he wrote so many songs more than 300 songs he wrote about rama and uh, in each song he is uh, is telling save my people save my people not for him he ask rama to save our people Rachala Ramadasa's song is very, as a music teacher, uh, his composition is um, very easy to uh, to teach youngsters, easy to understand. It's very simple lyrics only, in simple words he used. The song, Yethi Ruka Nanu Dayachu Chedavo Inavam Sotama Rama. Yethi Ruka, how? you protect me please tell me rama the conversation between rama and lord bhadrachala bhadrachala ramadasa e ti ruka nanu daya chuchetavo ina vamso tarama is it possible na tarama baba sagara meedanu nalina dalekshana rama you ask ram lord rama please help me to cross this ocean Finally, Rama came, uh, Rama and Lakshmana came, uh, how much he spent for uh, poor people and temple. Nearly, in those times, six lakhs rupees. So Rama appeared before that king, Tanisha, and he gave all the money in the form of gold. Then Tanisha came to know, Oh, Lord Rama, that is Bhadrachala, that is Ramdasa, believed on him, Ramda, Ramdasa's God. Oh, he is Rama. Lord appeared before Tanisha. He is a Muslim. He is a Hindu. Before him, he appeared King Tanish. After Lord Rama and Lashmana gone, he took all the money and he put the feet of Ramdasa, Gopana, and he apologized. Please don't mistake me. But he never took the money. He took the coin. He took only two coins in the memory of Lord Rama and Lashmana. Anisha took all the money and deposited for the development of the temple. Every Sri Ramanavami festival, that is during English month April, so in the in the time, the Tanisha and now, still now, the follower or uh, the relation of Tanish, Tanish, they the Muslims sending money to celebrate the function. Still, they are living peacefully and brotherly South Africa has given birth to remarkable sons and daughters whose courage and determination even in the face of adversity serves as an inspiration to us all Paralympian and national record-holding field athlete Tyron Pele is no exception. In fact, Tyron's positive attitude, coupled with his passion to give back to fellow paraplegics who are less advantaged, instills in us a greater sense of the fatherhood of God and brotherhood of man. 
We met this proudly South African ambassador at the Open Air School in Durban recently during a heartwarming seva. I think one of the things for me was that I never saw that I had a disability. I always believed I could achieve anything that I, that I wanted to. Also, I was raised with some amazing parents. They made me believe that anything is possible. Tyron was born with a deformity, but we didn't look at it as a problem because we gave him every opportunity to be who he is. We supported him from a little child. He started walking at the age of 10 months. And he persevered and then he went through most of his schooling years being an athlete. And I mean, there wasn't much for disabled athletes, as you know. But Tyron persevered, and eventually he's now, I could say, an international athlete, and he's inspired so many people. If you look at my journey, I never competed as a disabled athlete until the last six years. Before that, I played active cricket for 14 years. I did everything as, no, as normal as I possibly could. So I've had this all my life. I haven't, it hasn't been a situation where I doubted it for a second. To me, it's a gift from God. We all have to have faith in God and believe in what He's actually given us and make the most out of every single situation. And for me, per se, without God, I wouldn't have been as strong-minded as I am today and believe that I can achieve all that I have. being a staunch Hindu and my background is of a Sai belief so a lot of it is based on love all, serve all and that's what we hear and that's what we're doing. I think when you hear and you see what we achieve and what can be achieved it's truly amazing. I think it's eye-opening for a lot of people. One of the things for me was thinking of ways to actually contribute to my own community and society in general. So what we came up with was an idea of how can we support kids with disabilities through some sort of a charity event. So a year ago I climbed up the Moses Mabida stairs raising a total of 850,000 rand for two charities. One is disability, something close to my heart, being an athlete with a disability and a person with a disability and cancer being something really, really close to me because I lost my dad 12 years ago today through cancer. They came down and measured the kids. We've done lots of measurements and photographs and things. And um, our kids were very, very excited. They couldn't stop coming to ask me, when are the jumping, when's the jumping kids project? When are they coming, when are they coming? And they were so happy to hear they were coming. It's been like quite an exciting two days, quite emotional. The kids get quite excited. It's been amazing to see how they're walking afterwards. So I went through the process of learning how to walk and going through all the things that these children are going through now. Um, I also started within the state and uh, started with uh, basic prosthetics and then slowly evolved and started to realize that there was much more out there available and five years ago got onto the system that I currently use and um, I started working with them mentoring the kids and I saw this as an opportunity to pay it forward and make sure that uh, the children, amputee children out there got high quality prosthetics that allow them to do whatever they, it is they want to do. You know, the big thing about this disability is that the, the real issue is the cost involved in getting prosthetics. We've also learned a lot about what, you know, muscles we need to work on that maybe haven't been doing before uh, and the different muscles they're going to be using with these new prosthetic limbs. Everyone that's with us has a very strong spiritual faith coupled with the technology that we have now. It's a winning combination for all of us. The, the difference this can make in a child's life is massive. Um, technology has moved to a point now where we can solve the issue within a few hours or days 
and then it becomes a matter of rehab and working with the kid. But ultimately, like with everything in life, it's about time, effort and attitude. So if they put in that time and that effort and they have the right attitude, they'll be able to find their feet, start walking. I always say this to people, what is normal? I mean, I've never understood the definition of that because to me, the way I live is, is normal to me. And for them growing up, that's, this is the way they're going to live. You know, they're going to be able to walk every day, they're going to be able to run, they're going to be able to have an active lifestyle. Always keep believing. Don't let anybody stop you from trying to achieve what you want to. And if in your heart you can basically believe it, you can achieve it. Welcome back to Sadhana. From the most gracious Lord Ram to His Grace's devotee and most humble servant, Sri Harumanji, who is given as much respect and honor, Sadhana joined the members of the Sri Hanuman Sanatan Dharma Sabha Mandir in Poshepston for the unveiling of the 108 stairs leading up to the new abode of Lord Hanuman during the temple's 75th anniversary celebrations. In today's opening is the unveiling of the 108 stairs, the, the new shrine of Hanumanji, and the celebration of the 75th anniversary of the old mandir. The 108 stairs, they say the 108 names of Sri Hanumanji. So each step that got a name and a plow is uh, either sponsored or donated by those families or in memory of those families. It took other individuals to build it to the 75th year. So even though we're moving forward, we don't want to forget our roots almost. So we incorporated them in our steps. So even though we are moving forward, there are a bit of them in us still. My grandfather came from India. 